Have you noticed that when you're struggling with anxiety, you're very focused on how you feel internally. You have like this inner feeling where you're always constantly scanning, always checking, why am I feeling this? Oh, this symptom changed. Oh, this moved a little bit. Oh, this is a new symptom. What does this mean? And you may feel like you have a hard time breaking that pattern. Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to really let go of this inner check-in and really focus on living your life and more importantly, helping you overcome this once and for all. So let's get started. So if you're struggling with anxiety, you're probably feeling physical symptoms. You're probably getting intrusive thoughts. What if it's this? What if it's that? What if I'm like this forever? What if I'm going crazy? Or you may be getting feelings of unreality, which is derealization, depersonalization, where you may feel disconnected from your body, or you may feel like none of this is real. And as you're going about this, you may feel like you're always checking in. You're so hyper-focused on how you feel internally. And you may even notice that it starts affecting your day-to-day -day life. You may have struggles or difficulty doing certain things because you're just so inner focused. I remember there was this time where somebody had, was having a conversation with me and I was just checking in so much that they had a conversation with me and like it felt like there was like a lag. Like they asked me a question and I would, it would take me like a second to answer back. And they'd be like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I guess. You know, I was fine, but I was just so internally focused. I just didn't understand why I was feeling this way. And you may be feeling this way too. And so why is this happening? Why do you have this inner focus? Well, the reason why is because, look, when people are experiencing anxiety, a lot of the reasons they're experiencing the anxiety is they don't really know what's happening. They don't know why these symptoms are such, right? Why am I feeling palpitations? Why am I feeling dizziness? Why am I feeling nausea? Why am I getting these intrusive thoughts? What if this thought means this? What if this thought means that? Why am I feeling so disconnected? Why am I getting panic attacks? And so you may be wondering why you're having all these things. And so your way of fixing this is by focusing on the symptom, which makes sense, right? If I have a, if I have a problem and I want the problem to go away, well, then I want to focus on the problem. Right? Because that way, if I can focus on the problem, I can figure out what to do to make it go away. Right? It's a very logical, intuitive approach. But here's the thing. Focusing on the symptom never works. And what it actually does is it makes you hyper-focused on the symptom. Right? And so you're always checking in the, the symptom. You're always doing like this threat scan. Is it there? Is it not? Oh, it's there. Bad. Oh, it's not there. Good. And so you're always checking in. And what happens over time is that it becomes a habit on its own. Now, if you need to stop checking in, it doesn't work. You're always checking in. Now you can't stop. Now it's become this impulsive behavior that doesn't stop. So I look at it as two ways. Number one is that I find people go into this trap because they genuinely don't know what's happening. And that's okay. And like I say, that makes a lot of sense. If you don't know what's happening, focusing on the symptom makes a lot of sense. But that's actually not the right approach. The better idea is understanding is how anxiety works. If you understand how anxiety works, you'll learn that what you're experiencing is almost like a side effect. It's almost like the result of the anxiety. And if you focus on the anxiety, that makes it go away. So I find people fall into that first category often where they just don't know what's happening. However, when I'm guiding people to recovery, once they understand how anxiety works, I also notice that there's a second category of people that know it's anxiety but can't stop focusing on how they feel internally. And oftentimes I get um, the question, hey, Sean, like, I know it's anxiety, but I just can't help always checking in. Like, I'm trying not to check in. I'm trying not to check in. And it's just very frustrating. I'm getting very frustrated about all this. Well, for the second category, it's really important to understand that, look, part of anxiety recovery isn't just overcoming the symptoms. It's about overcoming the behaviors and the habits that you developed as a way to avoid the anxiety, the avoidance behavior. And so what happens is that it's important to recognize that your habit of checking in has been a habit that you've developed. This wasn't something overnight. You didn't actually think, okay, I'm going to create this habit of checking in. All you did was is that you checked in at this moment. 
And you did that so many times that it became a habit on its own. Now you can't stop checking in. So in that same way, you can't look at unchecking your habit overnight, meaning how you feel internally, you can't stop that overnight because it, didn't, it wasn't overnight for it to be built. So it's important to recognize that this habit is going to be there a little bit longer, right? So think about it this way. Think about it as, you know, I have a problem, right? That seems unsolvable, okay? Whatever problem, let's say it's not even anxiety related. I have this problem very hyper-focused on the problem. Now the problem, I've been dealing with the problem for so long, for so long, weeks, months, years, trying to fix the problem, trying to fix the problem. Now let's say that problem gets fixed, okay? Now the problem is fixed. Now even though the problem's fixed, and there may be a short amount of time where I'm still checking in, oh, is the problem there? Oh, oh okay, it's not there, yeah, what the heck? Yeah, I totally forgot, yeah. Oh wait, is the problem, oh yeah, I fixed it. Ah, oh, it's just, I've been dealing with the problem for so long, it's so ridiculous that I don't have this problem anymore. Right? And so what happens is that even though the problem is fixed, you still may have a habit of checking in. Unlearning that habit takes a little bit more time and re anxiety recovery is the exact same. Once you start realizing, oh, it's just an offset of anxiety. Oh, okay, it's just anxiety. I just need to let it pass. I just need to give it a little bit more time. You still have that habit of checking in. And so a lot of the reasons why people get frustrated and a lot of people get stuck is because they don't understand the mechanics of this. They don't understand how habits play a role in this. They don't understand how the fight or flight response works. They don't understand that, you know, what they're going through is, is naturally difficult and it's, been an, it's felt like an unsolvable problem for a while. And as the problem gets fixed, well, then, you know, what are, what are the second order consequences that happen because of that? And these are things that not a lot of people talk about. So like I say, to wrap up this video, internally checking in is a result of you trying to focus on the symptoms. And so for that, what I would recommend is really understand how anxiety works, right? Obviously, before you do all that, look, I, don't, I shouldn't need to say this in every video because it should be obvious. You need to get everything ruled out by your doctor. That's 100%, you should always do that. You should never use these videos or anything you find on the internet as a uh, substitute for medical advice, get everything ruled out. Once that's the case, then I would highly recommend understand the mechanics of how anxiety works. One of the best um, resources um, that I found were a couple of books. I actually wrote a book as well, and my book is free. It really breaks down how recovery looks like, the mechanics behind it, um, success stories. It, it gives you graphs. It gives you a really good understanding of how recovery looks like. So if you, if you really wanna know more, I'll put a uh, link down below to the book. The book is absolutely free. It's something I wish I would have had. Other books, if you really are wanting to invest, I would recommend uh, Claire Weeks, Hope and Help for Your Nerves, Paul David at Last of Life. I also like Barry McDonough's book, Dare. Um, him, Michelle Cavanaugh is absolutely incredible. Once you start focusing on it, you will notice that on the recovery journey that you may still have a habit of checking in. Just recognize the habit takes a little bit longer. And then it uncovers itself. Again, these are the nuances nobody really talks about in recovery. And one of the best ways I've personally found is have someone guide you step by step. So if this video really helped, what I would highly recommend is find somebody who knows what's happening to guide you step by step. And one of the best places to start that I think is first normalizing what you're experiencing. And by that, I mean, understand how, um, how other people have recovered really see their success stories, see what they were struggling with, how they came out of it. And so if you wanna know more, I'll put a link down in the comments where it shows just success stories, people just like you that were struggling just like you who are now back to living. These are people, I didn't tell them to say anything in particular, I didn't tell them to do anything, I just said, hey, come on and share your story. Most of them are my own clients and a lot of them are now actually coaches too now. So I hope this video helped. Um, check the link down below and I'll see you in the next one.